that we are recording the meeting. So I'm going to start by making a brief presentation, just a few slides to get everybody oriented to the specific area that we're talking about. And then I'm going to ask you to turn your mics on a couple at a time, just so we can avoid the interference that these platforms all often have. But we'll make sure that we've heard from everybody before we wrap the virtual meeting up. So this is just to get us started, orient you to the phase one parks, as Stephanie alluded to in her points of introduction, the waterfront exercise is divided into three different parts. And we've been asked to look at the parks that are indicated in orange. So one Willow Beach, De La Salle and Franklin Beach, Jackson's Point, Malone Wharf, Bonnie Park, Mossington Wharf and the Black River, and then Holmes Point Beach up at the other end. So today we're having a very specific conversation with the slip holders, the Jackson's Point Harbor Marina. So here we are. You people on this call know this very well, exactly where we are located. Lorne, Malone, and the area outlined in red is the specific property that we've been asked to look at for this exercise. I'm zeroing in now on property ownership. So everything in light blue is owned by the town. Pink is owned by the region. And as you know, the construction of the marine unit is well underway, almost complete. Three is also owned by the town, but it's leased uh, to a private operator. And then four is privately owned. So everything that's not colored is privately owned, including, again, as people on this call know very well, the lands that are right on the water's edge. A few quick statistics on the size of the various components of the area that we're looking at. Got a graphic that just illustrates the various amenities and facilities that are in the area outlined in white, the picnic tables, the marina, the parking, the children's playground, the beach. And then Glenn has uh, helped. Glenn's role on the team is also to help us with economic development. And so what he does early on is to just do a quick assessment of what's in the immediate area. And he's, he'll be putting this within the context of a bit um, more specific analysis of the financial and operating costs of the marina. But this just to get us uh, started with the conversation about what's in the harbor now and what's really close by in terms of other tourist facilities and amenities. So here we're zeroing in again on Jackson's Point. So to get everybody oriented, you can obviously see the slips here and the wharf and the lighthouse that's at the end of the, the uh, uh, breakwater, the location of the new marine unit, the buildings that existed on the site. Of illustrations, diagrams of the marine unit, and you've probably all been watching it very closely in the star. It's located just as you know at the end of the, the harbor here. And we understand that uh, they're very close to completion. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to come back to this slide and use it for the conversation when you share your thoughts. And I'm going to put this up because this is what Glenn and I and, and Stephanie are most interested in hearing today. So we want to understand the opportunities for expanding the slips. And if anybody has any ideas specifically on the allocation for transient and seasonal slips by various boat sizes. Want to know about gas and pump out power, washroom, shower, all the other uh, amenities that might Come along with the marina. Your thoughts on parking, drop off, pick up, and then we also want to touch on management options for the harbor, for the marina specifically. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, you are welcome to share your thoughts in the chat box at the bottom. And I sent out a test. It's you'll see a little speech bubble on your screen somewhere. And um, but because we're we're not 
you know, it's a manageable group. Sometimes I rely on the chat box if it's a really large group, but it's relatively manageable right now. So I'm going to call out names. I have names in my list of participants that are listed alphabetically. And so I'm going to ask just three at a time to turn your mics on and your cameras if you want. You don't have to turn your cameras on if you don't want to. And uh, just get you to share your thoughts. And then I'm going to go to the next three and the next three. So on my um, list of participants, I have a, a name card. And excuse me if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Card, David Goldstein, and Emily. Do you want to turn your mics on and correct? Mic is on. on. Okay. So the first I have up is um, Art Urquhart. All right. Yeah, that's just the name it, it calls up onto. So I know um, you had your mic on in the beginning. And I'll assume that if you don't turn your mic on, that there's no uh, thoughts that you want to share. So I see David's got his mic on. Emily, if you want to put your mic on. And in the meantime, I'll go to David. And you have your camera on, too. Um, could I you. ask you to put the um, listing of the slide sizes, the prior yeah. slide there for a moment? Sure. This one? Thank, Thank you, you very much. May, May I ask as well whether you have a preliminary um, plan or schedule for how you think this would uh, best fit? Or what sizes you think? Uh, because, because what, what I'm wondering is, are you going to, or are we dealing with the same number of fingers that are there, or are you talking about a brand new configured harbor to accommodate these various sizes? Um, well, the first thing is the expansion of the slips. And so we are intrigued to find out your thoughts on whether you think there's a need to expand the slips. And then I guess to your point, the same configuration or different. So it can be either or. We're really at the beginning stage of the exercise. We don't have a, a preliminary scribble or sketch of the new layout. And we wanted to make sure we connect with slip holders and other residents and stakeholders in the community before we go too far. So um, what are your thoughts on the number well, that's there now? Okay. So I've been in the harbor for many years. I also have uh, had boats on Lake Ontario. Mm -hmm. The general trend in boats is larger. Most of the marinas in Ontario who are expanding are providing larger accommodation uh, for boats. And if you look at new boat sales, uh, whereas the average sailboat 10 years ago was 38 or 36 feet, uh, now it's in the mid to higher 40s. Okay. So, my sense is that um, you're going to want accommodation for larger boats. Okay. And that's going to require considerable redesign of the harbor uh, to facilitate that. Okay. So when you say a redesign of the, the configuration of the slips to accommodate Absolutely. more slips that would accommodate bigger boats. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other issue is, are you planning or hoping to target uh, sailboats as well as power boats? Because if so, then the depth becomes an issue. Yeah. Uh, and issues such as, you know, dredging, uh, you know, and weed control yeah. uh, would otherwise limit your ability to attract any more than a handful of uh, sailboats over 30 feet. Okay. Sailboats versus power boats because of the, Correct. Uh, the weeds and the implicate. Okay. Well, because the sailboat requires depth for yeah. a keel. Okay. And, um, the, you know, as former Commodore of Sail Georgina, we were always challenged attracting new members because our slip uh, uh, accommodation was limited to a very small number of slips that could provide guaranteed five feet of okay. water. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm just going to ask uh, Glenn. I know you have your mic on. You're on your phone, Glenn. Do you want to um, offer any 
opinion on the sailboat versus larger or power boats and the size of boats, the demand for slips for larger boats? Well, my, my understanding is um, from the work that we did before, and I'm not sure what the situation is now, but, but certainly um, there were a fair number of, of, of sail um, boats um, yeah. in the marina. Um, and not so many power boats, but the indication that that we have is that that with the aging of the population, um, the number of sailboats is is decreasing, and the number of power boats um, is increasing. Mm -hmm. um, what that would suggest to us is, and I guess I'd like to hear back from 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 the people that are using the marina, that would that would seem to indicate that there is a, a need for um, um, power at the slips, um, in fact, at all of the slips. Um, and in fact, if we're going to cater to the bigger boats, it means both um, uh, 35 and, and probably some 50 amp power um, at the slips. Okay. Um, I just want to pause for a minute because I heard from one of the meeting participants that they can't hear anything. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm listening, listening on, on the phone. phone. There is a problem. Uh, I'm listening on the phone, and, and, that, and there's delay with that. So there's something wrong with the projection. So sometimes it is um, everybody's uh, internet provider or service. So I'm hearing everybody fine. Uh, Councillor Sebo, do you hear? Stephanie's fine. Councillor Sebo, you're okay. So uh, sometimes what I found is that if people close other applications or windows or files that they have on their computer, that helps. Uh, you could also call in from your phone and listen to the listen to it on your phone while watching it on the screen. So you can try those things. Um, okay, David. Can I make a comment, Donna, regarding yeah. the um, um, the power and sailboats? Yeah. So, so historically, the club started out with. Uh, small fleet, a, a fleet of smaller sized sailboats. Yeah. And with time, because sailboats are not as roomy as power boats, most members have graduated to larger boats. But that progression was uh, halted to a great extent because there was no, there was limited uh, slips, and so uh, members couldn't upgrade, get bigger boats, or get more boats, get bigger boats. Um, for the marina, because we are always at capacity in terms of how many 30 plus boats, 30 plus foot boats we could accommodate. But in general, now there is a um, trend towards larger boats and fewer smaller boats. And if you look in uh, up in Barrie, up at Toronto Outer Harbour, you'll find that uh, there's a lot more sailboats actually uh, coming in and being sold. Uh, because, because of the, the um, affordability and the cost of running these uh, as leisure craft. Okay. So looking at that. Oops, again. So um, looking at the distribution of the allocation of the number of slips. So what you're saying is that proportionally we should have a higher number of slips set aside for bigger boats. So I think I'm. Okay. Um, I am going to move on to the next three. I just want to make sure I get through everybody and then we're going to come back because we have lots sure. of time set aside. So the next people on my list, assuming again that Emily and um, Ms. Urquhart don't have any comments that they want to share right now, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Sebo to turn on your mic. And Ken, I see you're on the screen. You can turn your mic on, and Nat, see if there's, um, if you want to, if you want to get your mics turned on and ready to share some thoughts. So, um, Councillor Siebel, you're next up on my list. If you want to turn your mic on, there you go. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, something that uh, I find very interesting is the, the sort of the, the push and pull. Oh. Power or sail, yeah. sail or power. 
Um, and I, I know that uh, Sail Georgina has has uh, called Scott Point Harbor for a number of years. Um, I, think, I think going forward, we need to look at the big picture. Um, as David Goldstein has indicated, uh, the trend in sailboats anyways is to larger vessels. But I think the other thing that needs to be pointed out in terms of trends is that it's becoming more and more difficult for them to find accommodations at, at um, marinas around the lake. Okay. Um, places like Beaverton Harbor, Barry Marina, uh, Aurelia Harbor, those places are, are have become less and less accommodating to sailboats. Um, and I think it's safe to say that the trend is as, as the population ages uh, towards powerboats. I know during the last round of consultations, I think uh, it was determined that the trend was actually towards smaller boats. Mm -hmm. um, I've been very adamant about the fact that that may be the case overall. Oh, getting a little bit of background there. Yep. On Lake yeah. Simcoe, which is part of the Trent Canal system, um, I don't believe that, that that trend towards smaller power vessels holds true. I know that the market this year has been booming yeah. uh, in all sectors of the marine industry. But in terms of the vessels that are, are um, plying the waters of the Trent Canal system, I think that the, it's safe to say the trend is towards larger boats. Lake Simcoe, okay. as, as most of the folks on the on the list of participants will agree, Lake Simcoe can eat you up on a bad day mm -hmm. and you don't want to be out there in a small boat. So mm -hmm. people might start out at an 18 foot bow rider, but they very quickly realize that they should be in a little bit bigger boat if they want to um, uh, spread their wings and travel further. So I just wanted to say that and having said all that, we have limited space mm -hmm. here. We have limited uh, logistics in terms of being able to accommodate those boats. So I'd always hope that maybe there might be room for a reconfiguration and an, an addition of maybe a dozen slips for larger vessels um, and, in an effort to try and attract some of those transient vessels that are, are out plying the waters of the Trent system and, okay. and spending money wherever they go. Okay, fair enough. Having said that, I mean, the, the, the harbor and, and the, the Malone Wharf and, and uh, Bonning Park, the, the opportunities to make improvements and um, enhance amenities is just uh, so exciting. And I'm really excited okay. about this process. And so I'm going to be quiet now and listen to okay. what other people have to say, because okay. I'm really curious to know okay. what how other people feel about the, the future of Jackson's Point Harbor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I see that um, Ms. Ricard turned your mic on and yeah. can you please correct me in the pronunciation of your name if i'm saying it incorrectly the last report you got right okay, okay. okay. Cared, like i cared for you okay um yeah <laughs> um so uh, my feeling about the harbor is i i mean i just i just remember the way it used to be years ago and i i i would love to see uh you know um gas docks again. I'd love to yeah. see a place where you get your boat fixed and tinkered with. I mean, I miss having yeah. all of that accessibility right there in the point and sort of having a reason to go. Right. Um, it would be nice if it was a place where people could come in, maybe have a sandwich, maybe there's tchotchkes that they sell that say Jackson's Point on it, you know, like just a reason to kind of be there um, for people to want to stop in the harbor and, and, and hang out for a bit, Yeah, whether they stay overnight or they don't or whatever. Yeah. Um, but personally, as a boat owner, I really miss having a gas dock, and I really miss having people who can fix boats. Okay. Um, okay. Go a long way now to to get a tank to fill up your tank or find somebody who can take care of your boat. So okay, I, I really think that's an essential component. And also, okay. there's no place to launch boats. I mean, right. We're now going over to uh, you know Virginia Beach to put our boat in uh, yeah. in the spring, you know, in the fall. So, and I know there's lots of people who who have had trouble lately with launching boats. So I think having a boat launch of some form okay. um, is also just even in the winter time, right? I mean, I think we have to be conscious of Lake Simcoe and the access to Lake Simcoe for all the, the fishermen in the huts, et cetera. We need a place to help them get, get out to the lake as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I see a comment here I'm just gonna share with uh, everybody on the call is that there is, uh, the comment is it would be nice to have factual data on the trends in boating, et cetera. And we will be doing that. We're working on that now. Our team is in the middle of assembling uh, research and everything we know about the five sites that we're looking at along the, the shoreline. And so we will be reporting out to that, out on that. We are 
uh, finalizing how we're going to be engaging with the broader community. And so when we do that, we'll have a kind of complete summary of work that we've done to that point. And that will include research on voting trends. Absolutely. You're right. Uh, you need factual information. Um, okay. So then I'm going to go next on my list, list was Ken. And I think you have your camera on. Ken, if you want to uh, share some thoughts, and then next up after Ken, I've got Nancy, and you've got your camera on too. So, Ken, take it uh, away. Sure. Uh, a couple of observations. Um, with the Marine unit, uh, the police Marine unit moving in, yep. uh, one of the considerations obviously will be to give them clear access in and out of the uh, their, their facility, right? So, yes. th that I'm sure will limit, you know, what you can do with the harbor. You can't go too far out because they're going to need to be able to get through. So, if you can see um, my if you can see my cursor on the screen, this line yeah. that I'm following here is the limit of the town-owned water lot. So you're right; it is okay. something absolutely that we have to keep in mind how they're going to come in into the. Yep, and as David channel. said, as David said, uh, you know, sailboats require more depth, and right now the larger sailboats can only be on what's D, what's called D dock, which is the outer set of fingers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yep, yeah, those ones there. Okay. Uh, so, so anything larger or deeper will need to you need to extend that outer dredge the harbor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so right there, you've only got. Uh, realistic during the the full season, maybe six feet of depth okay. right, with, without doing okay. any dredging. So, okay. Um, also, to follow on what David had said, um, there aren't a lot of places on Lake Simcoe that can accommodate sailboats, and okay. and I believe that we should be able to accommodate both power boats and sailboats in okay. the harbor. But uh, there aren't many places that can accommodate sailboats. Uh, uh, Crates Marine in Keswick is probably one of the few in the area that can accommodate it, but even that's limited by the depth that they can accommodate. Okay. And I know D David, for one, he has to leave, he has to uh, haul his boat early in the sea, early at the end of the season because he can't accommodate the depth uh, later on. So he's out by the end of August. Okay. So he's missing a couple of months potentially of of use um, just because of depth. Uh, so, if, if we Grace don't Hill. have that's at Grace, not in Jackson's Point Harbor. Yes, correct. Not getting out hauled out at Grace. Yeah, so, Jackson's Point Harbor is ideal. Yeah, Jackson Point again is is you know by the end of the summer six foot on average probably along D dock. So, okay. um, so to accommodate larger sailboats, you need to make that consideration. So okay. Um, that that said, I I do know that we have we have lost some some members of Sail Georgina and also have have uh, some potential members turn away because of lack of of uh, availability of slips for them, and okay. that could accommodate their boat. So the alternative is um, is that they have to go elsewhere, somewhere outside of Georgina, to be okay. able to launch and and hold hold a boat in a slip so okay. we're talking lagoon city or barry somewhere that's you know an hour away from where they live right. so right. uh jackson's point is one of the few harbors that can actually accommodate sailboats okay so that makes it attractive from that perspective so okay okay the other the other facilities as um someone had mentioned um the larger sailboats obviously would like power um, the ability to get water and to do pump out is also uh, something that would be looked at. Um, otherwise, they have to go somewhere else on the lake to to be able to do that. Okay. Okay. I think the any other facilities other than washrooms and and the ability to have showers, uh, the other services are are probably lesser of importance. Okay. I think. Um, you know, people are living in the area, so they tend to bring what they need with them. And if they do need to get something, they're going to run into Sutton. Right, right. right. Okay. Sobeys or whatever. So, so the, you're saying not 
as necessary to have those other kinds of things, groceries and liquor store and, and whatnot right here because it's so close to Sutton. I, I, I don't I don't believe so. Yeah. Um, and the same thing, at least from a from a sailboat perspective, uh, gas is not as important either because they use so little fuel. Right, right. right. Uh, I, I don't use 10 liters of fuel for the whole summer. Right, okay. Because you yes. really only use the motor to get, get in and out of the harbor. Right. Whereas the big cruisers are going to need something, right? If we're going to try and attract them into the harbor as well. Okay. Uh, obviously, okay. purely from a sailboat perspective, it would be nice to have a place to launch boats, but that requires uh, at least having a place where you can put a crane, at least on a yeah. temporary basis while you're doing launch and pull up. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, all of the members have to go. Um, somewhere else like Crates or, or uh, Lagoon City, which which again drives them away from Jackson's Point. Right, right. Okay. Okay. What is the, or maybe Glenn, you know, I, I don't know what the current split is between sailboats and powerboats in, the, in this marina. Glenn, do you know? I don't, I don't know offhand okay. what the split is, no. Okay. okay. I, I believe, um, Nancy, you can probably know it off the top of your head, but I believe there's 26 sailboats in okay. the harbor this year from Sail okay. Georgina. Okay. And then the rest. Okay. Yeah, right. but there's some that aren't from Sail Georgina, so I don't actually a, have that the number. Rest would be a mix. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have that number. Okay, sorry. If it's, but, but, if it's but half there half. are some non Sail Georgina sailboats as well, so. Okay. You're probably talking a higher number, maybe 30. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. The council. If I could chime in for just a second, just on the sailboat versus powerboat scenario, I think we yeah. have to obviously be conscious that it's going to need both because yes. it's not, I mean, I think the marina has to service not just people yes. who work there, right. but we need to service all the people who need something to do with their boat, anything to do with, with right. boat, water, with water and shore. We right. have to be conscious of how they're coming in on sea news, they're coming in on Whatever. I mean, I think that's, we should be thinking big picture. And not okay. Part. Okay. Um, uh, so just a, a few points of clarification, just so I can share it with everybody on the call that I'm getting in the chat box that um, the sailboats launch from Malone Wharf and it's been done for a number of years. They rent a crane for one morning. So that's, that's good to know. And that uh, traditionally sail Georgina has had, 30 of the 54 slips. So that gives us you know, just a little over half. And that, um, and then about 70% of the members come from outside of Georgina. So that's interesting too. Um, Nancy, you're up next. Hi, I'm the current uh, Commodore of Sail Georgina and I'm here with my husband. And I live in Sutton. Yeah. I lived in Sutton since 1985. So I'm definitely a local. Yes. And I've had a sailboat in this harbor since 2002. Okay. Um, I do believe we can work together. And there's no reason in the world why this cannot be for both sailboats and powerboats. And I don't think it should be one or the other. Okay. Um, for the reasons that were recently pointed out, but also we're all taxpayers in this community and we all enjoy having access to this and certainly should have that access. Now, having said that, even with our previous boat that had a four foot draft, we could not pump out here. We had to go somewhere on the other side of the lake to pump out if our head was full. Um, so that is an issue. We need to be able to get in. We could not have got fuel, water, or pump out at Bonnie Boats. I think in all the years, we've only managed to get in there once, and even then, we were on the bottom, hmm. which isn't a good mm -hmm. thing. Um, depth is definitely an issue. We have lost many, many people who most have lived in Georgina who would have loved to have been in this harbor and can't because of depth and size. And that's the reality of what's going on in the world, both for the power boaters and the sail boaters. We, as we age, we like bigger boats and we like the comforts. Parking continues to be an issue, and I think that's something that needs to be very carefully considered, particularly now that the fire truck is parking in there and taking a number of, of, 
uh, parking spots up too. Even with the park closed this year, the parking gets rather crowded. Um, so there needs to be sufficient parking. And, and I do like, sorry, Nancy, sorry, just so I understand the fire truck is a, the town of Georgina's fire truck or the town of Georgina's search and rescue fire truck okay. that has the fire boat in there too, is okay. taking up like four parking spots okay. when they're there. And when they're not there where nobody's to use them, they're blocked off. Um, so the parking continues to be an issue. I'd love to see a drop off point where you can pull up you know, drop off your belongings, maybe a passenger, whatever, and then go park your car. That would certainly make it easier. Okay. As far as electrical goes, there isn't enough for the number of boats that are there now. We have some boats that want more than one cord and to run electrical or, you know, air conditioning, whatever they have. I don't know what they have, um, but there isn't enough now. So okay. that needs to certainly be considered for the future. And if we really want this facility, to be a top-notch facility, it needs to be substantially bigger because right now it's just kind of a half-done little thing that doesn't really help anybody. Okay, It's great because it's three kilometers from my house, yeah. um, but I store at Lagoon City. I do not launch from that wharf um, for a variety of reasons, but we store and launch in Lagoon City. Okay, And we'd love to rather spend our money in Georgina, but it's just not feasible. So substantially bigger. So when you say substantially bigger and knowing that there's 54 slips there now, are you, what's a substantially bigger mean? It should double? be double. Double. It should be double. Yeah. Or at least, at least um, half as many, again, large and deeper slips. Because the, the shallow slips, the slips on the A and B dock, as they're called, yeah. are basically really suitable for fishing boats and little sailing dinghies. That's really all between the weeds and how shallow it is. Okay. Okay. That Thank you for hosting. Is, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go keep going down my list and then I'm going to open it up just for anybody to weigh in. So next on my list, I have Rick and Sally and then Tim. So if you want to turn your mics on. So I've got Rick Barkey and Sally and Tim. So Sally, you've got your mic on, so you go first. Well, sure. Hi, everyone. Tim get organized. Hi, can Sally. you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Perfect. Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, I'm a new member of the uh, marina, um, Georgina Sail Club. Yeah. And um, we only have a very small boat, so we don't um, use any of the um, amenities. I'm not sure how the rating works um, or the, you know, how much you pay, how that's calculated, but I think that should be uh, looked at for those boats, like some of the small fishing boats who aren't using a lot of the amenities either. So that that's one comment. I'd like to see a schedule of some sort based on, uh, you know, electrical use and other things like that. Okay. Um, and the, the second thing I wanted to say was that um, I think we're just uh, maybe missing this, and it's, I think, a very important part, but this marina is part of the community, um, and it, it has a real community feel, at least through Sail Georgina. There's um, always somebody to give you a hand, to give you advice. It's a very lovely group of people that want to socialize, are really keen on boating, bringing other people into the boating world. You know, you don't have to have a 35 foot boat to, to be part of the group, um, you know, you're welcome. And I think this is just such a great feel rather than the idea of bringing in huge transient boats that are here for one day, as opposed to building community within the community. And I, I think for me, that's the most important point and okay. what I've, really enjoyed about it okay so that's that's, that's a, my that's a great that's a great perspective so you know like always on these these kind of projects there's um different opinions and that's what's really intriguing for us to hear all sides of opinion on on things like this so we hear some say the opportunity to expand the marina and you're raising the point well why not keep it a little bit smaller and focus on creating a really great um, sense of community with the people that are there. And that's, that's a really interesting perspective. Um, 
Rick, your your microphone's on. So do you want to yes, share some thoughts? Sure. Yeah, I think definitely a boat ramp is, is needed. I have an 18 okay. foot boat. Yeah. I have to drive all the way either out to Virginia or down to Keswick to launch. Yeah. And then bring it over to the marina. Okay. Uh, I do appreciate the weeds being cleaned out this year. That was awesome. Okay. I definitely yeah. think there's a lot of people in the township that have boats this year that did not launch because okay. there was no rain close by. There wasn't. And I know right? many. There wasn't. I didn't hear that last part. I'm sorry. There was not a ramp close to them or available oh, not a to ramp. them. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know many people that have their boats in Keswick that live in Sutton. Yeah. And have their boats in Virginia and live in Sutton because there's no room here for them to get keep their smaller boats here. The 18 foot size. Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I definitely think an expansion is necessary. Okay. An expansion as well. Okay. Um, and, and the boat yeah. ramp. I mean, we have heard um, people talk about the need for a boat ramp for a while. Yes. So. And if you, if you still want to have a transient boat up here, Bonnie Boat's ramp was always busy on a weekend. Yeah. Okay. It needed control, but it was always busy. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um, Tim, so I don't see your mic coming on, and then I have Wayne as well. And then uh, I will have cycled through everybody on the list, and I'm happy to go back. Wayne. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. Um, just a few comments. I I live in the community and I've uh, boated in Jackson's Harbor uh, for the past twenty years. Okay. Uh, power boating. Okay. Uh, I have no issue. Boating is boating in my mind. I think uh, uh, there's no difference in my mind between a sailboat and a power boat. We both enjoy the water, mm -hmm. and in fact, I. Uh, uh, where I slip right now in in the harbor, uh, my neighbor takes me out on his sailboat, and I I enjoy that as much as I do my own boating. Um, one thing, maybe I just want to refresh here is back when Bonnie boats was still alive and well, uh, there were sixty additional boats uh, that were part of the harbor that were slipped. Uh, where now the uh, marine unit is and also along the shoreline where there's a boathouse yeah so we actually lost 60 boat slips and um, looking at your map right now yep. i see the water lots and i have a difficult time understanding where you could possibly expand because the only water lot that's open for expansion is actually owned by um uh, the Ramada. the Ramada right down here yeah. yeah you can't go out any farther because of the break wall for clearances right right so yeah. that that's an issue uh my point about the harbor is that we took our eye off the ball uh when it was sold and we've just let it uh basically deteriorate and so that's where we are now we're dealing with a deteriorated harbor that was just recently uh thanks to daryl urquhart uh promoted and we live here so we see the people looking at that lighthouse and yeah and it's yeah. a beacon yeah it's a beacon yeah. to this harbor that we need to enhance uh what we have which is we should have a boat launch we should have a proper marina uh you know if you look over at Virginia, all they got is a tank there that pumps out gas and a little hot. That's all you really need. You don't need anything too fancy. And a boat launch and the amenity there would be, you know, washrooms and, yeah. and, a, and the park. Yeah. So not only for the community, but also for a tourist attraction. Uh, I see that uh, at Lake Drive and uh, Grew Boulevard, uh, they're finally looks like they're going to start building some condos there which will be right in front of the park entrance so that is just going to hopefully boost up jackson's point as an attraction mm -hmm. and i think the marina and the harbor could be built on to uh to make it more of an attraction okay uh 
those are the comments I have. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. That's really helpful. Does anybody else have any other ideas or suggestions? One of the other things I had on my list that I haven't heard too much talking about, I heard a little bit about drop off, the suggestion about having a place to drop off things and then go and park, and that's very useful. But other uh, parking and that for uh, half a day or a day and go back to this. Does anybody have any suggestions on parking? Donna. Donna, yep. Who's, yep, Wayne. It's, it's Wayne again. Yep. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. The one thing I forgot to say was what we're forgetting here is that um, there is the rest of the year. Yeah. Like Jackson's yep. Point Harbor is an attraction year round if we make yep. it such. Okay. Yep. We have ice fishing. Um, okay. And, you know, this, this has been an important loss this year for many people, not just the community, but also people coming from all over. Like I said, we live in the area and people are just bewildered that there's nothing going on here. So okay. it's important to look at the harbor, not only as a boating harbor, but also as a year round attraction. Yeah, that's a really good. That is a good okay, thank you. Good, very good point. And I do want to just um, clarify that uh, the town has for uh, uh, many, many years now um, been looking at this area, the harbor, Malone Wharf, Bunny Park, and trying to determine the best path forward. So I don't want um, people to think that the town in particular has dropped the ball on this. It's a very challenging um, situation here with a lot of different interests, and it's going to take a little bit to unpack it all and figure out what the best path is moving forward. And so now with the town placing this within the context of the other waterfront parks. It's a great uh, way to figure out what the priorities are moving forward. So any, um, just to put it out there again, any suggestions for other things on the park, the, the beach, the park, the opportunities for parking elsewhere in this area, the driveway? Uh, one comment, the, the, um, based on the map here, in yep. behind where the uh, the new uh, police shop's going to be yep. across the street, there's a there's a spot right of vacant land. Yeah, right in here. Yeah, where yeah, my cursor that, is. Yeah. Could that be used uh, for parking for for folks? Yeah, it, it's a really good suggestion, and I think it is a fantastic opportunity for that, because when we um, have done our site work the past couple of weeks, couple of months. Uh, getting our team up to speed on this. This this can be a beautiful driveway into the park and the marina. And so it would be nice to see it after construction of the marine unit is completed, designed as a beautiful driveway, tree lined with maybe a little bit of parking off to the side, but maybe not necessarily driving through a parking lot to get to, to, get to the park, to get to the uh, water's edge. So the idea that maybe some of that could be carved off into this. Excuse me, Donna, it's Nancy. Idea. Yeah, Nancy. Um, that spot back there, we have used it for a number of years as overflow parking. Okay. Um, as we were directed by the town, okay. the members of the sailing club were using that as their overflow parking, particularly when the parkette was busy with visitors. Okay. So it certainly Good. has been used as parking. Okay. It's not, it, it would need work. It's got a, some big rocks and stuff, but it's yep. certainly being used that way. Okay, great to know. Hi, Don. Yep, and that's it's, uh, it's Rick. Rick. Yep, hi, Rick. Yeah, I live in the area and I walk across that area quite often. Yeah, it's fine for parking cars. Yeah, it's near. It's narrow for parking boats and trailers. Okay. So I I think if we're keeping the marina as a sail club or marina parking, that could be used as an over as a parking for visitors. With okay. their cars and make them walk down to the beach or the park. Yeah. Okay. Um, and keep the keep the closer parking for the the marina owners or the marina renters, and uh, okay. that would that would keep more traffic out of the park area, more cars going up and down yeah. when people are trying to walk up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you always worry about that when there's uh, 
park and playground. But that area is definitely too small, side to side for parking a boat and a trailer. Okay. But two cars to park in there, one on each side, and still have room to get in and out. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to Thank know. you. Thank, thanks a lot. Thank you. John, that's Councillor Sebo. Can I? Can I? Uh, yes, you can. Add a couple of things. So, as you know, we looked at the idea of uh, of adding a boat launch um, in the Jacksons Point area, and as part of that was the issue with, with regards to parking. Yeah. And it had been determined that 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 unused road allowance would accommodate about 30 trucks and trailers parked parallel to each other. Um, because if we have a boat launch here, there absolutely has to be parking, and and that's one of those logistical issues. There just isn't the room. Uh, just, I was thinking about this this summer, like the, the construction of YRP, um, they're at a point now where they can't park on the YRP site. So they've been parking in the parking lot at the park. And that's been what has led to very few parking spots, period. Right. Um, but if we were to try and accommodate more parking, even just for the slip holders, we are, we are in a major deficit as far as parking goes, 56 slips and something like 18 parking spots. If there was a parking spot per slip, yeah. that would take up the whole park. Right. So so right. definitely something gonna have to give, but I just wanted to mention that there is room on that road allowance for 30 trucks and trailers to park. Okay. If, they, if there was some sort of staging area where they could launch their boat, tie their boat to a dock, right. and then go and park their truck and trailer and walk back. Yeah. So that was one. The other thing I wanted to just mention quickly from my perspective is the um, configuration of the harbor itself, the marina itself. Obviously, if we're looking at a complete reconfiguration, there's big dollar signs attached to that, and it may take a while. But in my mind, ideally, um, we would reconfigure the marina and the slip layout so that the main dock follows the channel that the YRP would be going in and out of. Um, it had been mentioned a moment ago that there's no room uh, on existing water lots to expand, but there's plenty of room um, east of the D dock between it and the break wall to add another row of slips and still allow for ingress and egress by the, the marine unit. So if, so if the main dock were to sort of follow the channel all the way as far as it can out towards the break wall and then run parallel with the break wall to where the lighthouse is, the police would go in and out through there, their wake and their, the commotion wouldn't cause any issues for the slip holders. I also sort of think that there's room for for day trippers to tie up on the outside of that main dock if it was configured that way. We could also have gas and pump out roughly in the same location it was in the past. So anyone coming in for gas could go in and out without interfering with the, the slip holders. Basically all of the slip holders would enter the marina from the south. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that, that there's a real opportunity to do that. And so then that way the day trippers wouldn't interfere with the seasonals and the transients. Get people coming in for gas wouldn't wouldn't interfere. The YRP could go in and out. It's going to be interesting to see what happens because uh, when they're responding to an emergency situation, in my mind, they still have to go slow out of there. Otherwise, yeah. they could cause major damage with their wake. Right. So, right. so to try and alleviate that concern, a reconfiguration of the of the whole slip system could be done to maximize the number of slips, minimize the impact of the police, and also um, allow for fuel and pump out and perhaps other marine services along the outside of it. Okay. Um, Donna? Yeah. It's been scared. Um, can you just update us on the status of ownership of the whole Bonnie Boats piece? Um, it's still privately owned. As we understand it, they are still uh, examining development opportunities, but that's all I know. So yeah, there's no development applications in on that site at the moment. Right. Okay. Is it is the town in any way actively going after that piece? After it, meaning purchasing it? Yeah, because that seems to me it's kind of a, a critical component to setting up this whole thing. I believe that is a step, it's another study that is being looked at outside of this Excellent. component. Yeah. I yeah. can tell you that issues related to property acquisition <laughs> are dealt with in closed session. They are dealt with in <laughs> So uh, having said that, yes, we have an interest in it as a municipality. Um, you know, to be very frank, uh, the price tag is triple what it was for the whole marina five, six, seven years ago. That's a really bitter pill to swallow. 
Mm -hmm. um, but we we're going to continue to work with the developer that owns that remaining portion of land to to see if we can't um, you know reach some kind of uh, a best scenario outcome uh, long term for sure. Uh, the only other thing I forgot to mention, Don, and I wanted to add. Um, oh no, what, now I'm going to forget what it was. Uh, I'll, sorry, I'll back out. But if I think of it, I'll speak okay, up. You can let me know. And I do. I do want to um, clarify. Just sorry, David, before you go, um, that. I do want to hear issues and opportunities and challenges, absolutely, um, topics for discussion, all of these things. And I am okay if you have specific ideas that you want to share, but for everybody on the call, absolutely our team, our design team is going to be developing concepts uh, that we're going to be sharing with everybody, of course. So if I don't want to put any limits on anybody's ideas, if you've thought for a long time and thought that something would be a good idea, I would love to hear it. So. The con the purpose is to absolutely talk about issues and challenges and opportunities, but then if there's specific solutions, like the number of slips or where a breakwater might be, I'm I'm happy to take note of that as well. Uh, David, let, let me go to David and then I'll come back to you, Councillor. Um, thank you. I'd, I'd like, like to just thank everyone for their input. I, I agree. I don't disagree with one point that anyone has made in this discussion uh, thus far. Um, I think that, there, that this harbor provides a, a great opportunity uh, for the community uh, to develop um, a facility that, that can serve all interests. And I want to be um, very clear that, that while I talk about sailboats, I own a powerboat as well. And and they're they're all the same. They're boats. Um, the interesting and very unique thing about Jackson's Point Harbor, though, is that it uh, has depth and it has immediate access to the lake, which makes it extremely unique. Why I say it this is because if the town is going to invest all sorts of money into this facility. Invariably, it's going to have to attract a significant amount of interest in, and, and boats and larger boats and and compete with the likes of um, uh, crates and uh, and um, uh, Beaverton Yacht Club. Um, right now, you know, crates is not full. Uh, they're far from it. Beaverton Yacht Club is. And I can tell you why there's no sailboats there. It's it's they're full with other uh, uh, boats. They don't need the business at the end of the day. Uh, but I will tell you that um, in the past three years, a number of larger sailboats have been sold onto Lake Simcoe and have found harbor on the north sides of Lake Simcoe and Barrie and in um, Hawkstone and and the like. Um, so. My comments are are really trying to think about it from a business perspective. If we're going to spend all of this money, we want to make sure that we get boats, we get them in there, um, and we fill the marina with 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 um, uh, what's the word non turnover people. People are going to come back year after year after year after year. And I believe that the marina has the ability to facilitate both small boats as well as larger boats. And if the town can successfully negotiate with the current owner of Bonnie Boats, there is opportunity for a large number of um, slips that will facilitate boats up to 22 or 23 uh, feet. The real challenge is on the expansion of the uh, uh, outer docks to facilitate more boats and larger boats out there and and the investment will be substantive and so we want to be sure that we have market and longevity okay thanks for that um councillor Sebo, i think you had another comment you wanted to make wanted to make i did yeah, i remembered what it was i wanted to comment on and and that is something that we've been experiencing at the harbor this year that's a relatively new phenomenon and that is a proliferation of swimmers and people on air mattresses and paddle boards coming from the Ramada and going out to the lighthouse oh. on New 
numerous, on numerous occasions, boaters coming in and out of the harbor have had to honk their horns at people swimming and treading water right in the middle of the entrance. Okay. On numerous occasions, a member, or one of the slip holders has had to go out and literally rescue people that have been blowing to sea on air mattresses and blow up dragons and that kind of thing. It's a really, it's a relatively new phenomenon, but it really um, illustrates the, the, the issues that were sort of touched on the last round of consultations with regards to the harbor about you know, boulders or swimmers and how how can that all be accommodated um definitely there, there's been uh you know evidence that there needs to be some kind of a marker buoy out there letting yeah. with two messages one of them is no wake or at least slow uh to, to new boulders a lot of new boulders on the water this year and more than once we've had people come flying in and out of there making a big wake and causing all kinds of disruption in there and then the uh, so uh, uh, there would be one side of this marker buoy would say uh, no wake or slow down, and then on the other side would say no swimming beyond this point. Um, interestingly, I attended a, a webinar a couple of days ago on signs and buoys put on by Transport Canada, and uh, they don't allow two messages on one marker buoy. So there would have to be uh, one marker buoy saying slow and another marker buoy saying no swimming. And as far as the no swimming buoy goes, um, it's certainly um, – you know, is a, is a would send the the right message, but it's not enforceable. And if people continued to swim out into the channel, they would they, there was no legal way to stop them from doing that. Apparently, but it's definitely something that's new this year, and it's a it's an issue for sure. Okay, okay, thank you. I have not heard that before. Um, just checking my time. It's just a little bit after four. Does anybody have any other? comments they'd like to share uh, i'd like to just add to what uh councillor sebo has said um yeah. i i think the swimmers and floaters in the harbor are worse this year but it's been a problem in the 12 years i've had my boat in there and you you come into the harbor and it's very difficult to see ahead in the water that's bobbing around yeah. and my fear is that you know someday someone's going to get killed yeah and it, it, it's been a chronic problem i think it's just exasperated more this year because there's more yeah. people over there so it is that is just again the point of balance whether it's boating or or swimming it is something that we really have to dive deep into and figure out how to make it safe and maybe make difficult choices or at least propose some difficult choices <laughs> Um, anybody? Hi. Yeah, oh, so my call. Oh, who's that, Wayne? Yep. Yeah, hi. And then I um, first of all, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for doing this. Um, uh, living in the community and also being a boater, uh, I know a lot of uh, the community here was interested in the outcome of this, but at the same time, you may want to have one of these sessions that focuses specifically on the community surrounding the harbor. Yes. As much as the boaters are here, but I think the statistics were that most of them aren't residents. So those yes. of us that do live here, plus the surrounding community, probably have as much, if not more, anti in what happens with the harbor long term. So yes. please consider that. Uh, I know. People are supposed to sign up when this thing opens up, but as much as you did this specifically for slip holders, it'd be good to do it for the surrounding yeah. community to make them aware of what's going on. I totally, Thank you. a hundred percent agree. I don't know, Stephanie, do you want to speak to that just at a high level a little bit? I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> oh, the question? Okay. I zoned out for a second there. <laughs> um, the question from Wayne was, uh, we should be doing this for the broader community, especially with uh, the community surrounding the harbor in this situation. You want to talk just high level. In terms of speaking about, to the broader community? Yeah, about community engagement and the challenges we've had. Yeah, we had some very nice public information centers scheduled, unfortunately. They had to be cancelled with the COVID situation. We had the first one was scheduled for April. Uh, we are planning on doing broader public engagement sessions uh, online currently. 
Uh, we're waiting to see about opening up facilities that may allow us to have in-person ones. We are doing a update regarding the community engagement process. Uh, it's scheduled for the September 23rd council meeting. So we will have a, a more detailed plan of that. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, if, if if I can just comment, uh, living living in the area and uh, having the uh, marine unit uh, going on as a construction site, uh, we're always behind the eight ball trying to understand what's going on. So it'd be nice now that you've opened this up to have the ability to have those discussions prior to making uh, the changes rather than finding out after. Uh, so if there's anything, Stephanie, you can do, like we'd be happy to go door to door and ask people if they'd like to participate, if that's an issue. But I think yeah. it's important for us that live in the area. Thank you. Yeah, we, we will be doing, I've been in talks with the, our communications department and we will be doing extensive um, social networking for it. So we'll be tweeting out when the when it opens up for these when their dates are announced for the open houses as well as how you can register to be a part of them mm -hmm. and we do have the website which everything will get updated on that as you go as well and yeah. so we there are a number of yeah. different times that we will be doing the open houses at different stages in the study so it's not to be here's the report it's complete and now you can comment <laughs> no yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I just chime in sorry for a second on you know snail mail doesn't hurt either because a lot of folks get inundated with with email etc and just so people don't miss you might want to drop something in somebody's door too i know it's a lot of extra effort and it yeah. be costly you know if you tweet and tell me i'm not even on twitter so i, I certainly wouldn't get that okay that's a great idea nancy thank you um, so just to be really clear and to reiterate what Stephanie said, absolutely, we're going to be connecting with the local residents. Absolutely, it's going to be, we're going to connect with them before concepts have been developed. So rest assured that we're going to do, be connecting with the community just as soon as we're given um, the green light to do so. So as you, as you know, all the communication in the in the town has been focused on COVID related issues, and so there was a decision that the town wanted to focus on dealing with COVID. So now that there's a tiny light at the end of the tunnel, we're looking forward to using exactly this kind of platform to reach out to the bar, broader community and have park focused conversations, perhaps. When is it expected for this uh, report to be completed? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> and I, because it has been um, delayed a little bit because of COVID and we haven't been able to connect with the community, I'm not sure what the answer to that is yet. Um, Stephanie, what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's going Yeah, to the be original schedule, it would have been done by the end of this year for part one of it. Yeah, and then so each part has a year assigned to it. So the next part two would be 2021, part three would be 2022. But as Donna said, we've lost a number of months by not yeah. being able to do the public engagement component. In the number of years that I've been in this harbor, there has been three of these kind of things. This is actually the fourth consultation I've been involved in, and nothing ever changes. It hasn't been, nothing's been adopted by council to move forward with. Yeah, there's nobody, we haven't been able to get, I would say, enough people on the same page. So if this report, once it's done, if, it, if it's adopted by council to move forward and start planning, trying to have these recommendations come about, that's when that they would start you would start to see the changes, but until everyone buys into it and it's approved to move forward with, and unfortunately that hasn't happened. 
Um, Go ahead. Thank you, Donna. Um, just wanted to make a few more comments on a, on a few of the aspects of the harbor that we haven't really talked about. Okay. Um, Malone Wharf and the break yep. wall. Yep. Um, Malone Wharf, there's some interesting opportunities there. Uh, tr traditionally, the town has leased space along it to um, Neil and Marine construction. Yep. And when his barge is there, it takes up that whole sort of southern side. Um, but there is an opportunity there to make improvements. Um, as most people know, there used to be a boat launch there years ago. That was part of a, a federal small craft harbor. Um, that uh, was, the boat launch was closed, it was turned over to the town. Um, so, and it really logistically was difficult for there to be a boat launch there because there was nowhere to park. Um, since that small craft harbor has been closed, Malone Wharf has become probably one of the busiest spots in Georgina to be able to go and fish from shore. Um, so when we didn't have COVID-19, it was very busy a, a lot of the time. Um, but I think there is an opportunity to, to make some further improvements there. Also, there's the Marine Railway there from that where they used to store the uh, steamships. And uh, there's an opportunity there to, to put in some kind of a lookout so that people can have a better look at that underwater railway. But maybe there's an opportunity to do some some day tripper slips there or some transient slips. Uh, I've been working with uh, um, various staff members uh, to try and see if there's a way to remove the little shack that's on Malone Wharf. Uh, it's apparently there as a water level testing station for Parks Canada. Uh, and they um, use the data to help control water levels in the Trent. But I've never seen anybody ever enter the building. And uh, if they were able to access the data remotely, and maybe that little building could be moved. Uh, it takes up about 12 feet of prime waterfront on the, on the wharf itself. Um, a couple of years ago, after several years of efforts, we finally got them to move the outhouses from where they had been putting them, uh, which was right beside that shack, sort of in the, in the best view possible. Uh, they finally moved them now, so they're kind of out of the way, tucked into the corner. And maybe we might be also able to move that shack over too. I've, I've been uh, having ongoing discussions with Bob Flindle and others about that. And I'll keep working on that because I don't think Jack needs to be there. Um, and the other thing is the break wall. I know at one point during the last round of consultations, we talked about the idea of possibly having some kind of a boardwalk on the break wall. And I really like that idea. Uh, I think that would allow for folks to be able to go out onto the break wall safely because they already do. Almost every day we see people on that break wall, they swim out to it or they clamber out to it from Malone Wharf. And if there was a proper boardwalk on it, it would allow people to walk their dogs out to the lighthouse. I don't know if we would want to allow fishing from it, but that's a possibility. Um, so I just, there's so many opportunities. The other thing is related to water lots. It was mentioned earlier that we're really kind of constricted by the water lot configuration. And to some extent we are. Uh, but I have had preliminary conversations with the owner of the Ramada, and they were certainly open to, um, you know, exploring opportunities, especially if it would um, allow for the accommodation of visiting boaters to be able to come into the harbor and then go to the Ramada Inn. Uh, they were certainly open to allowing us to expand the slip, uh, the slips over their water lot if some of them could be used by their guests, okay. and that's certainly an option. Um, okay. The only, thing, the only last thing I'll say is that I've always looked at this, you know, yeah, it's not Port of Aurelia, it's not Barry, there's, there's logistical constraints, it's smaller, it's quainter, absolutely, it's got more of a community feel. Um, but I think we need to look at it in the big picture. I was hoping to be able to have a virtual background so I could have the whole, the whole shoreline of Georgina behind me, um, because the harbor is one of the pieces of the puzzle. Um, and it and it ties in very nicely with, for instance, um, Mossington's Wharf, which isn't too far away, and the entrance to the Black River. Um, as most people know, um, the, the Blue Bridge limits the the height of boats that can go in the Black River, as well as the the depth. So I do, at the I do want to just keep focused on the marina, though, uh, Councillor. Sure. I don't want to just focus on Jackson's point. Absolutely. But what I was going to say, Donna, is that larger boats can come into the harbor, get a slip for the night, right. and then go up the Black River in their tent. Okay. Okay. That's okay. close enough. That's a possibility. And then this lastly, Donna, I just wanted to add that we also have a, a real sort of a, 
um, a handful of uh, unique uh, waterfront sites uh, like Virginia Beach Wharf, Island Grove Wharf, uh, Mossington's Wharf. Um, and so there may be an opportunity to improve facilities in those locations to allow for uh, some degree of transient boaters to stay overnight at those okay. places. So I am, I am intrigued about um, Malone Wharf, especially in light of the comments that uh, were shared about it being used to launch uh, boats and use cranes for a half a day or a day. So that's intriguing to me, and it will be important to know that and understand that when we look at um, changes to the whole area outlined in red. Um, so I just want to make sure, does anybody else... Have any mm -hmm. who turned there? Is that Rick? Yep, Rick. Um, I've lived in the area for 43 years, and Malone and Malone used to be the only boat ramp that was a township dock up here. Okay, um, right now, right now, with the break wall there, even this past weekend, there was people down there swimming off Malone that had parked their cars elsewhere out on the break wall. It was a swimmer. 50 yep. feet off the break wall that almost got run over by a boat. Okay. Okay. We do not want to extend it out there for more swimming out beyond the break wall when there's jet skis and boats coming around the point. Okay. I mean, I really am um, understanding some of the conflicts that exist with boating and other uses in the harbor. That's for sure. But like, um, the break wall is a dangerous spot when there's boats coming out of the harbor, coming yeah. around the point. Jet skis right. come around the point between the break wall. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's a very busy perspective. You don't want to encourage swimming. Don't want to encourage swimming. Okay. What else? So with uh, for other people, um, just going to shout out to Emily. I don't I think I've heard from Emily, but totally fine, listening. Um, Council, we've heard lots. Nancy, Rick, Sally, uh, Tim. I don't believe Tim turned his mic on. Uh, but again, I'll just assume that you've been listening. And Wayne, we've heard lots. Is there anything else? No, conversation It's uh, always, you know, we start. We want to talk to slip holders and have a specific conversation how the marina works, but I always anticipate that the conversation is going to go a little bit wider and narrower, and that's completely fine. We've set aside an hour and a half, and you know, people, one idea leads to another, leads to another. So I um, I appreciate your patience and sometimes us straying off the specifics of the slips and the harbor operations but this was my original list the one thing that we haven't touched on too much is management options for the marine I, I was a bit i was about to comment on that actually okay. because i hadn't talked about it yeah and you know it's, it's it's town property today yep i i think if if the town decides to do what everyone I think would like to have done with the harbor, then we probably need some proper, some people that know how to manage a harbor. Okay. Right. Um, you know, currently uh, we have two, I'm going to call them summer students. I don't know if that's what they actually are, but I think they're, they're summer employees that kind of look after things around there. Yeah. In previous years, some, some years we haven't had any, sometimes we've had one or two, part time but if you're going to do something with the harbor then you need to staff it properly and you need to have someone manage it who knows how to manage a harbor okay. and i think that's different than trying to manage a parking lot or a building or something like that i think it requires some level of knowledge so um okay. that leaves it open you know it, town decision do you hire someone to do that but it's really a seasonal thing or do you just turn it over to a management company and have them run it on the behalf? I think that's a decision the town would have to make and what makes the best sense. Okay. But I do feel fairly adamant that you need to have someone running it that knows what they're doing, as opposed to just hiring a couple of summer students if you want to do it properly. 
Okay. Um, sorry, Councillor, just want to see, does anybody else want to weigh on this before I come back to it? Councillor uh, Wayne, is your mic? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, management options. Um, one, one of the things that should be looked at is absolutely go, you know, kind of go external. Like, uh, uh, the big issue will always be, is there enough, for instance, if, it, if gas was for sale, is there enough sales to warrant running a business there? Yeah. But you have to start looking at other things like, you know, uh, for instance, a bait shop uh, opening up there or something like that. And, you know, maybe a coffee shop and stuff like that. And so make it, you know, kind of a, a general store, so to speak, that has the marina flavor for it that makes it an attraction for people to come and visit the harbor and also hopefully purchase things. Okay. Maybe some of the oil companies would be interested. Uh, you know, they have the uh, en route on the highways. What about something like that in a marina where you start off here and you have some type of a marina en route? We are on the Trent Canal system. It would also maybe attract uh, transient traffic into Jackson's Point and also in Button for uh, for bringing in business. Okay. Uh, because you know that's what we have to do here. The the harbor is an attraction. We got to build on it. Okay. And I'm I'm going off, so I will say okay. thank you very much Thanks for very doing much. this. Thanks. Thanks thank for you. joining. So just a couple more minutes, uh, Councillor Sebo. Did you want to just? I say something. Yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, I just respect to, to the management. With regards to management options. Yep. Um, Ken had mentioned that there's been a couple of uh, park staff there uh, this summer. Um, they are considered park ambassadors. They're part of our uh, response to COVID-19. They're actually redeployed staff. One of them is normally full time at our pool, but our pool is closed. So um, she's been working at the harbor, and they're they're tasked solely with just keeping the public out of the park. And they've actually the, um, kind of gone a little bit over in terms of picking up garbage and tidying up in the area. Um, but their primary job is to just control access to the park, to make sure that the people coming in are slip holders, that the people parking are supposed to be there and turning the rest away, unfortunately. But absolutely, um, you know, going forward, there needs to be, if, if the town is gonna be the manager of this, then there would need to be, um, 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 more of a staff presence obviously in the past uh there have there was a period of time when there was nobody there uh go back earlier than that and there was someone there every day and we have a harbor master um currently it's the it's the park ambassador scenario um and but when when covid 19 um wasn't here and hopefully when it goes away <laughs> we will have staff there on a more regular basis uh in the last couple of years there's definitely been an increase in the amount of staffing there but to, to the point that Ken made, uh, he's absolutely right. They need to know what they're doing there. And it's not the same as managing a park or a parking lot. I would love to see staff uh, come out onto the dock and, and assist people um, you know, who are coming in and, and going out. We have to look at that whole management uh, situation because as far as transients go, we've really not done a good job of tracking how many transients there are. They, they are asked to go to the parking uh, lot to pay for their slip very few do um uh, but as far as management options go there are several uh the town could continue to manage it with our own staff um we could have an arrangement similar to what they do in aurelia where the the chamber of commerce manages the port of aurelia um we could certainly do what what places i think like oshawa and some of those larger areas have done which is put an rfp out and see if there's anyone interested in managing it for us um that's definitely an issue that needs to be looked at more for sure. And then just lastly, I wanted to comment with regards to public consultation and public input. It was suggested that, a, that going door to door might be required in the area. Uh, I just want to just emphasize once again, uh, as Ward 4 Councillor, by all means, if anybody has input on the harbor, on our waterfront strategy development or on any other issue, I'm at your service and you can reach me. My contact information's on the town's website and I'm at, I've been at the Harbor every day since June 17th. So if you wanna talk Harbor with me, I'm, I'm open to it and happy to. Thanks, thanks Councilor. Okay, I am, it's just 4.30 now and 
uh, just one call out to see if anybody else has comments in closing and I don't see anybody turning their mics on. Um, and uh, again, on the engagement, absolutely, the planning partnership is going to be um, organizing and facilitating and reporting out on community engagement. Um, with that, I am going to thank you for tolerance and patience using this platform. I really appreciate it. The conversation has been really helpful. I've got a ton of notes, and I know Glenn's been taking notes and Stephanie as well. Uh, we'll be posting this recording on the project's webpage on the town's website. So there's a specific page for the Waterfront Parks Master Plan. Um, so that's all I wanted to get through today. This has really been terrific. Stephanie, I'm not sure if you have anything in closing you want to add. I do. I appreciate everyone taking their time and your feedback is the most valuable that we can get in terms of not just you guys, but everybody in the community and all the users. So yeah. we do put a lot of importance in what we hear. Yeah. And again, we will be reaching out to as many residents as we possibly can. This is just a tiny first step in connecting with some of the specific stakeholder groups, but community-wide for sure. So uh, thank you very much. And with that, I'm going to end the meeting on everyone's behalf. Thank you again. Thank you, Donna. Bye, everyone.